getting your money's worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Jennifer Openshaw, CEO of Super Futures, and Dow Jones columnist, and lots of things, big pedigree. But you're <laughs> concentrating on this now, right? Yeah. I am, right. because it's a, such an enormous need. It's such need. an enormous need, yeah. Okay, um, we I've had Jennifer on getting your money's worth before, and anytime she talks, you get, you get your money's worth. Okay, <laughs> so Super Futures. Um, what's the mission of Super Futures? Well, it's to help high school teens, and thus the parents, answer what do I want to be when I grow up and how do I get there? And the reason is that guidance counseling in our schools uh, is very limited because schools are facing budget cuts and, and guidance counselors are doing the best they can, but in many cases they're dealing with a thousand kids and not able to give them the one-on-one -on -one attention. And yet we're seeing only 38% of students in college graduate in four years. I want to just jump ahead and then come back. Uh, the um the also included in the, in the counseling that guidance counselors are supposed to be giving, but also including in what you do in Super Futures is, is to, to, after all, this show is called Getting Your Money's Worth, mm -hmm. is to help parents and college students get their money's worth out of their college education. Well, that's exactly right, because so right. not graduating on four years can easily or, add ten, or, twenty thousand dollars Or even graduating. Or so even it, graduating. It does not, this does not promise a, a, job, a job, and that's the issue. And and what I want to say is that folks investigate most of the time how much if they're spending buying a car for thirty thousand or forty thousand. They investigate the car. They test drive it. They go on consumers' analyses on the internet. And certainly, if people buy a house for a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, they have. Um, somebody inspected, they have a plumber, they have this, they have that. You know. An education in this country can cost over a quarter of a million dollars, and nobody investigates anything. No, and we send them off to college without based a road upon, map, without a road upon, map. And based upon some recommendation or something the kid, the, 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 the teenager reads himself on the internet or something his friend told Correct. him about in the University of Podunk or Correct. something. And they have no idea uh, what it, what, what that, the prospects of that job in the future, the earnings, the education that's required, um, or even if it's really going to even be there in a couple of years because some of the jobs that are now out there weren't here five years ago. And will not, and, and the ones that are here now may not be out there three years exactly. from now. Exactly. Uh, so let's get to, so let's get to what you do. For starters, let's take a, what, a 17 or 18 year old. 18 year old that's on uh, the cusp of entering college. Uh, how does that rather isolated teenager in today's world have any notion of what he'd like to do, how to plan for, or even how to investigate whether the college is for him or her? Do you start with Do you start with those questions? We do actually. And, so we, tell me how you do that because that's pretty tough to do. Well, we start with an assessment. And we also ask them specifically what their passions and interests are. Because a lot of adults, and, and I've had therapists tell me this, 50-year-old adults are changing careers radically yes, because yes. nobody gave them their options. And so we're trying to give them their options. We don't tell a kid at that age, this is what you should do. We are giving them options based on their skills and their interests. Well, how do you assess these? Is some kind of testing? We use a testing um, method. And what we are able to give back are career options and possible college majors. But then we take the, have the student go further with that. We get feedback from, from family and friends because they know them. We have them go do some research. We have them think and together with their coach, so, so they're working with a trained coach, think about what are some of the not so obvious careers that maybe I should think about. And then we give them some real world skills so that they can do it on their own because the problem today is that kids come out of college, and I see them because sometimes they're interviewing with us, they cannot even do an interview. They don't know how to network. They don't know how to do an email. They, they don't have any financial literacy either. Correct, no financial literacy either. And those are the things that we're teaching them in a small group environment with a coach, but we're doing it with interactive live classes. So the upshot is where a parent today might think, well, my guidance counselor at school can do it. Well, 
let's see, because chances are they're doing the best they can, but it's not a lot of time at all. And the only other option is a high-priced independent counselor, yes. which really focuses just on the college admissions process, not the skills that are critical to getting an interview and or getting a job. the value of these high-priced college counselors generally depends on the uh, elite, the elitism of the university they can get the kid into. Correct. Which may and not necessarily be the right college right. to begin with. And by the way, for some kids, maybe not going to a traditional college is the right option for them. I'm specifically saying option. Because, you know, I was just talking to a guidance counselor the other day who is on our advisory board. And she said, you know, some of these kids, of course, should maybe go to a vocational school, not a college school. Uh, college. And by the way, if a kid learned mechanic from their parents and they have a passion for that, they will learn, earn more money going to a trained program rather than just trying to enter, a, which they could. Absolutely. But, you know, 10 bucks right. an hour right. versus 40 bucks an hour, maybe. Right. Um, what about what about these all these liberal arts colleges of which there are many and and very high priced uh, tuitions I might say and sought after because of their imprimatur their reputation. Um, what do you say to a kid that says, "I want to major in English lit" or "I want to major in in uh, art curator" or "I want to major in a history of music"? I mean, all valuable, worthwhile. Um, pursuits, but what do you, but should the parent invest a quarter of a million dollars in English lit? And we've had a parent invest just that and their, and their child can't get a job. I think it's important that... Political science, poli sci. Right. Um, I think it's important first that, that the question is first asked, why am I majoring this and understanding it? And I think a lot of times that we major in things and we don't really understand what's uh, behind it. And we also don't understand what the possible career paths are off of that. I do also believe, because I've seen this a lot, that experience in the real world can matter in many cases more. Um, Harvard Business School, for example, doesn't require um, uh, tests that they did 20 years ago to get into the business school because that real world experience can make a difference. And so even when they're in high school and of course in college, getting that experience is absolutely critical to determining your right path and therefore a possible major for you. And then also building those skills and the resume and the recommendations to get a real job. It is important that people start in high school. When, once in a while, a parent will say, and it's pretty rare, but they'll say, well, gosh, that's too early. There's so much for them to do. You know what? You are wasting your money sending them to college, not thinking about it now. And what's interesting is that I've seen students see this form or class as an outlet for their stress and other things to talk about their future. They are stressed about it because of what they hear from parents and other and people. And especially in these times when, yes. when so many so many of these kids have perhaps unemployed parents that are on their own. Exactly right. Exactly right. And so the, the, the school is not the place where it can happen at a level that it should. The home is often not the place because the parents don't have time or they're not okay, equipped they or dynamics. Themselves. Yeah, or, the, or, or they're thinking, and so we find that this is a, a wonderful place and they're interactive classes at a more affordable price. It's, there isn't anything like it out there. Right. Um, the college tuitions have been, they have beat the inflation factor, which we don't have yeah. one. I mean, they have risen higher than anything else. Um, then you, we realize, you know, uh, this is an important topic because I don't know, do two-thirds on the average of college students receive some kind of financial aid? I know it's high in many schools. Well, I don't know the exact number, it but, half? It's, but certainly a, high. A, it's very high and also a huge number of, a big reason that kids um, do drop out of school, right? right? And so part and of those the, that don't, they graduate with these enormous loans. Uh, Jennifer. Yes, and the and the huge. There's something like 40 percent of young people are not able to pursue their dreams because of that debt, uh, and many of them today are living with mom and dad. And and I do think you know it's funny. I I went to school. Uh, first of all, one of the reasons I'm here is I went to three undergraduate colleges. It's a shocking number to some people, for two reasons. Money. I put myself through. In the first year, I had a lot of one-time scholarships that just ran out the first year. And secondly was not so good guidance. I would have made a very different, in fact, I probably would have gone to the university I graduated from today 
and not started the first had I known a little bit more about the real world. And it's a complicated real world out there. And um, young people, by the way, have told us in surveys that they want more guidance than what they're getting right now. They need it. They need it. It's shocking that they're not getting it. It is. Yeah. Yeah, because just like buying those and for And for parents that want to help, um, do they have the, I should say the right, can parents go or call up or email the schools and ask them questions like how many full-time professors teach classes versus fellows? What is your graduation rate? Well, some uh, of that. How, how many job interviews do you, uh, on average, get come out of career fairs? Ask some of these very pointed questions about the value of that particular college's educational experience. The answer is yes, they can answer yes those yes, questions. Yes and, yes. and they will get some answers, and some of those answers will probably be limited. Good example is, you know, I met with a, um, this was a, a public school recently, and, she, and the guidance counselor said to me, you know, there's only so many job shadows we can do. And so one of the things Super Futures is doing is to br leverage the expertise and knowledge of real world experts and bring it to young people. Because young people have told us, uh, I did a lot of research for this, and they said that they wanted to learn from people who had already been there out there. Um, but this needs to be people they relate to. So we, for example, will do webinars, Facebook do's and don'ts, taught by somebody who's in the real world. Uh, how to make a powerful uh, impression in an interview. interview. That would yeah. Be but by leveraging webinars, and these young people are learning online, but it's like an online classroom. It's not they're on their own. Conversations are happening. Right. Yes, conversations are happening. We do, by the way, if a if an entity or a school wants an in-person version of what we do, we can certainly do that as well. But but these experts out there, I was at Thomson Reuters yesterday, and and here are these you know experts know all sorts, everything from technology are to you able. You know, we don't, we really don't have a minute left. Yes. I mean, it's a hot topic. But tell me something in this in this econ economy now, are kids able? Are you able to help kids find jobs? You have, we did you get did. a kid. Here's a wonderful. This kid went through our program. He he's online at the site. And there's a testimonial. He says he created a killer interview. He got a job at a law firm, a paying job over the summer. And he because some of the interview. things, and because he did some, other, he, he got some guidance from us. Absolutely, oh can make a bit. I like also, and I, this is a topic maybe that we'll explore again, Jennifer. Where you do talk in your book as a kind of a closure, that today's world we live in is really not a job structured world. It's more of a skills structured world, in that. You can't prepare yourself for a job. You have to prepare yourself to be a little more flexible and a little bit more able to shift gears. Adapt, yes. Adapt, yes. Adapt, yes. Yeah. Yes. You make a point of that flexibility. Uh, yes, and in fact, uh, an executive from Google spoke to our students and, and made that point. The bottom line is today that the traditional path of going straight to corporate America is only there for a fraction of the number of people it used to be. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is now a new route that people have to Which, be ready for. Which, by the way, is a for. very popular major. Yes. So one of our courses is called Passions into Impact Super Entrepreneur, and we do just that. Okay. As well as so. that's a very that's a very good end, that's a very good <laughs> ending for you. Okay. Um, thanks for being on the show. You bet. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West, host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>